to the Kill Count, where we tally up the victims in all our favorite horror movies. I'm James A. Janice, and today we're looking at I Get Out, it. released in 2017 by Get Out Kill Count. Bro, I've seen Bruce reacting to these, but I haven't, I haven't watched his reaction. I haven't watched these videos at all. I just thought it might be interesting, so yeah, said, I clicked on it. He said where I get it from. Where I get it from? The fucking Delhi, nigga. The Bronx or New York? <laughs> I writer director Jordan Peele in his directorial debut. I'm doing this movie back to back with Night of the Living Dead because Peele has cited Romero's several. Yo, this nigga's marks dropping a new movie, chat. This nigga dropping a new movie. Y'all seen? Have y'all seen? Y'all seen Get Out? I know you had to see Get Out. You had to see Us. Those are his two movies. Jordan Peele's dropping a third movie called Nope, nigga. Nope. With Kiki Palmer and that bitch, bro, that shit gotta be fire. It just has to be. The major influence on Get Out. Both films feature a black man, more or less isolated inside a house full of white people. And while that may be where the similarities end on the surface, both movies ended up being huge in what they said about race. Now, while Romero has said he didn't intentionally create Night of the Living I'm gonna Dead fly out there for some top cheese. Jordan Peele definitely did Get Out. out. This movie's got a whole sandwich. lot of things to say about systemic racism, of... with Peele specifically saying it's about the lack of acknowledgement that racism exists. But it's also a really well-crafted movie in general with an amazing bro, i came out here bro ask for chopped bro first of all i came out here asked for chopped cheese i think so what's that bro every time i hear what's that from up from delhi's bro i just get so saddened bro then i asked for grabble nigga said what's that i just like oh man bro like new york is just that's one thing about new york though where anybody who leaves new york be like yes i finally got out of new york but nigga they be miserable yo i don't got no stores the stores close early i can't get a sale feel me Niggas gotta drive, certain states, y'all niggas gotta drive 10 minutes, 15 minutes to stores to be like, yeah, bro, that shit is ass. Cast, some nice twists, and while we have to wait until the end to see them, some pretty great kills. Now, I'm not 100% qualified to discuss all the sociological aspects of this. Harlem movie. is on New York? Nigga, what? Film, but I've pretty much got a PhD in talking about kills, so let's get to them. Kill count. Let's see how many kills is in this bitch. If I had to predict, I've seen this movie like three times. But if I had to predict how many people get killed in this movie, I say one, and then you got the family, so that's four. But then the motherfucker that took over the bot, mm, seven. I say nine kills. Chat, there is nine kills in this movie. But damn, nine kills only? Is that enough? It's a 15 minute fucking video. Nine kills is gonna cover 15 minutes? Hmm. Zay, where you at? I'm in Compton. You watched this already? The movie begins with a cold open where a black guy is walking down the- Oh wait, and I forgot the officers. Damn, I say 10. I say 9. 9. 9. The street in a neighborhood he's not entirely comfortable in. Confusing as suburb. Doesn't help when a car driving by pulls a Yui and starts following him. The guy tries to turn around Bruh, don't live the street, in New York, but he's bro. accosted by someone in a night's home in who puts him in a headlock and knocks him out. He drags him away, puts him in the trunk of his car, and drives away as the credits start. That's there are a couple up. of cool songs this about is how the movie across started. the street, but he's accosted by someone in a night's home who puts him like, in, what the fuck? in a headlock and knocks him out. He drags him away, puts him in the trunk of his car. This is why you really gotta keep that shit on his you. car and drives away as the credits start. There are a couple of cool songs over them, including Childish Gambino's Redbone. And that's just one more reason you should probably go watch this movie for real instead of just kill count it up between like a q and r train what the fuck are those? so many of you do after the credits we meet our hero you chris washington a photographer getting ready for his first visit to the home of his girlfriend rose armitage they're a super good looking I couple go and totes <laughs> bro Bro, New York don't give a fuck about no Times Square and none of that shit, bro. Only the rest of the world will be coming there to see shit. We don't give a fuck about that shit, bro. It ain't nothing there, bro. Like, what the fuck I do in Times Square? Go to McDonald's, nigga? McDonald's not even there. It's not there no more? That's yeah. crazy. Went to the movies there. Went to BBQs around there. Wasn't there Apollo around there some shit? Bro, what the fuck is there to do on 42nd? I don't know. Yeah, like, go go around Christmas time, nigga, go see a Christmas tree or something. Oh, uh, have the freaking, uh, Oh, wait, that's not even 42nd Street. Have the characters outside of... Oh, you can see Butt Naked Woman. Yeah. yeah. You can see Butt... Yeah, yeah. Nah, they be having pants on. The Naked Cowboy. They be showing ass, but they don't be showing dick. But the girls, they be showing everything. 
in love. He might even love her more than his adorable puppy Sid. But something is bothering him. Do they know him? Do they know him? Black? I've never been to America, but New York is a state and the city is New York City. Rose says no, okay. but that it doesn't matter because her parents are nice, non-racist, liberal folk. My dad would have voted for Obama a third time if he could have. Bro, Chris that's so racist, bro. Who smoke, cares even though Rose ain't having this and she's trying to get him to quit. Chris avoids that becoming an argument by calling up his buddy Rod, who works at I've TSA been the and is going to be watching Sid over the I didn't go the to the Crown. Rod's skeptical of Chris's weekend No, I've been to the Crown. I don't think I've been to the Torch. Like what? Well, I've been somewhere high. But Chris doesn't Empire think anything of it. They end up hitting a deer that jumps in front of the car, and while they're sorting it all out with a cop, oh, I forgot like about the fucking deer, bro. That counts as a kill. A little uncomfortable. Sir, can I see your license, please? Wait, why? Yeah, I have state ID. Rose gets up and arms. Isn't it crazy thinking about it now? She, I, at the beginning of the movie, I'm thinking like, oh, she's a W white girl. She, she, you don't need to see his license. He wasn't driving. Bro, why am I tearing up, bro? Every time I watch these shits, I tear up. White people controlling me. <laughs> God damn. But listen, yo, I thought she was being a W male girl and, and trying to hop, to protect the black nigga from the cops. Bro. And I thought the cop was being racist. Whole time. Whole time. Most likely it's because black people was going missing, so he wanted to see his ID. So he can have a track record of me just in case. And she was like, nah, that is not happening. He's about to have no track record of this nigga coming out here doing nothing. That's crazy, bro. It's about the way the cop is treated. This movie, Chris, I can lie, this movie, this movie series is tough. Remember you were scared to watch us? I was traumatized from that movie. Chris reacts like this is everyday shit for him because, you know, it probably is. Doesn't stop him from appreciating it, though. It was hot. It was hot. Fuck with my man. Oh, they're so cute, guys. I love them. They arrive at the Armitage. I was just doing his job for bro. That's a W cop. Now that, like, looking back, when you first watched, it was like, fuck that nigga. Feel me? Fuck the police. But now it's like, damn, bro. That nigga was, he was trying to come in clutch. They, where Father Dean and Mother Missy give them a warm welcome. Dean even says he's happy they hit a deer. I say one down, a couple hundred thousand to go. I see a dead deer on the side of the road. I think to myself, that's a start. Man, he really doesn't like deer. You might watch this tomorrow, do you think? I wonder if that's code for something. It's probably nothing. Dean seems to be just a goofy dad who's excited. Are oh, you talking about the movie? Or are you talking about the video? Are you talking about the movie? Go watch that shit. Wait, you never watched it? Wait, Skill, you never watched Get Out? Don't get spoiled, bro. To give Chris a Look tour of the, the house, including a picture of his dad who just narrowly lost against Jesse Owens to qualify for the Olympics. And in case you didn't Wait, know... Wait, they're Jeff not keeping account, though. They already killed the deer, nigga. The Owens was a black sprinter who kicked they ass. They telling us about the whole movie. I don't give a fuck about just get. Why he not just skipping to the kills? The 1936 Olympics in Berlin and quote single-handedly crushed Hitler's myth of Aryan yeah. supremacy. You can already see there's going to be a lot of symbolism in this movie. During the tour, you Chris never also seen it. Uh, you gotta watch Get staff, Out. You gotta watch us. Georgina the cook and Walter the groundskeeper. The Dean dare don't that count. Bad, why? It literally they says kill count. It doesn't say people, parents, nigga. And they just kept them on after his parents passed. Chris's mom has also passed away, as he reveals during tea time. Kill count, wherein nigga. it also comes out that Missy. Is a therapist who could use he hypnosis killed. to help Chris kick his smoking habit. How about it, Chris? Want these rich white strangers fucking around inside your brain? I'm good, actually. Good call, dude. Rose's brother Jeremy arrives, and that night they all sit down for a family dinner. Yeah, the stories matter. are shared and laughs are had, but some things seem a little Fred, off. And I don't just mean Jeremy's hair hygiene. I'm talking about Ooh, shit like man. Georgina's behavior. Earlier, she wigged out while pouring some drinks, and now seems to be just kind of catatonic in the kitchen. And Jeremy's all kinds of creepy, asking Chris real intently if he's ever done MMA. Who's with your frame and your genetic? Makeup. Your frame you and your meta makeup. Beast. He even tries to drunkenly engage in some jujitsu, but beast. the rest of the family shuts it down. At least Rose seems to be aware of how weird her family's acting, as nah, she, she complains no in her underwear to Chris that night and compares movie. her family to the cop they faced earlier. Chris has a moment of I told you so, but they assure each other of their love and go to bed. Chris has a hard time sleeping that night, so he heads out back for a cigarette, and it's the perfect time bro, for the I movie cannot, to dial yeah, its weirdness. Before, Walter cranks before it up. Before anything even happened in this movie, I was like, bro, I'm not going to know all white anything, nigga. I don't trust white. I, oh, shit. What's Black History Month? Trisha let me get away with it. I don't trust white people. I'm not going to all white nothing. I don't trust white girl. Like, feel me? It's quiet, bro. It's a quiet. Few notches when he this runs nigga was at wild for even coming like here. His groundskeeper Flash. And he Georgina was wild for even coming here, By bro. doing glamour poses in the reflection of the window. To cap off Chris's evening of what the fuckery, on his way back to bed, he gets confronted by Missy, who's chilling in this chair ready to grill him on his smoking. Do you smoke? Jay, why you used to claim the blood? You want problems? Yeah, I want problems, death, nigga. Chris what realizes happened? that Missy may be starting her hypnosis. Wait, are we? Where were you when she died? 
He doesn't want to go it along with it, but Missy keeps no stirring interest. her spoon I don't and it seems unable to watch resist. It. Apparently, his mom died on her way home from work while UGS he was a kid nine, watching TV, Bobby and he feels me. guilty because he never called anyone to Back, try to help. To be fair, though, that would have been like prime Nick Toon era television, so don't feel too Bro, I was watching Power like two, three weeks ago. Remember the Power episode when the nigga Tariq went hunting with uh Braden family? I'm like, bro, why the fuck is you going hunting with them white people? And look, they almost shot the nigga on purpose with the goddamn hunting rifles. He was hunting niggas. Too bad, Chris. This is just one of many scenes that exemplify the outstanding talent of Daniel Kaluuya, who, by the way, uh, is British as fuck. And is That's exactly how I was tearing when I was watching it. He, his movies always make me tear. Not out of, like, I'm sad or something. It's like, it's like the conspiracy theories of all that bullshit. I don't know. For some reason, when I think too much about it, just water comes from my eyes. I don't even be crying nothing. I don't feel sad nothing. He's doing an impeccable American act. Nigga, am I white? Accent throughout this entire movie. He's eventually paralyzed. Flash me with the, take a picture of me with the flash. See if I act out. ...by her hypnosis, and then she sends him away. Now, but you know a guy will. sink into the floor. Wait, 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 wait. Sink. And sink he does. All into an endless insane. void and a very memorable effect that makes him seem like he's floating in wait, a why did not show this and deep space. Why is it Physically, he's still why is he in his doing chair, the movie frozen, overview? and Missy leans into his face and tells him where he is. Now you're in the sunken place. That is a place I do not nah, want to sunken be. Place he is shuts crazy. his eyes and he wakes up in bed the next morning, covered in sweat and pretty friggin' confused. Later that day, he tries to make small talk with Walter, who seems more than a little off in his mannerisms, and especially the way he talks about Rose. One of a kind. Top of the line. Top of the line. Doggone keeper. <laughs> nah, this nigga also, was creeping me the fuck out the whole time, bro. Confirms that Chris was indeed sitting with Missy in a session. Chris tells Rose about it and says that her hypnosis bro. did seem to work and that the thought of cigarettes makes him want to with up now. now it's time to get a bro, party really started. Said that the Armitages the are having nigga. their annual collection of old when white people here, over, some kind of ass. tradition that was started by Dean's parents. All of them are super awkward around Chris, Jordan asking him for about Jordan his golf form, feeling all up on his muscles, and telling him about how cool it is that he's black. Black. Is in fashion. Chris understandably steps away and is relieved when he finally spots another black guy at the party, a guy named Logan. And this dude's pretty missing, weird bro. too, and it's not just his Thurston Howell attire. He's also shacking up with this lady many years his senior and kind of rats on Chris to her. Chris was just telling me how he felt much more comfortable with my being here. Then he goes over and models for the other partygoers. Beard guy approves. Seems like Chris is doomed to be entirely uncomfortable here until he runs into Jim Hudson, a blind art dealer who is familiar with Chris's work and tells him it's very impressive. Jim also tried to be a photographer, but then he lost his eyesight. Both of them reflect upon how that shit ain't fair. When Chris goes inside to take a breather from the whole situation, this happens. <laughs> Yeah, just a little creepy, huh? Also creepy is that he keeps finding his phone unplugged and he thinks it might be Georgina. She comes in later to apologize to him and he tries to be real with her. There's too many white people I get nervous, you know. But it uh kinda seems to break her. Oh no. 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 No, 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 no. She assures him the armitages are good to them and treat them like family. Chris checks in with Rod and tells him about all the weird shit going on, and Rod gives us the comic relief we expect from Jordan Peele. I don't know if you know this, white people love making people sex slaves and shit. Rod's serious though. He doesn't trust the hypnosis that Chris tells him about and really thinks it's a sex slavering going on. Downstairs, more of the partygoers grill Chris about his experience as a black bro, man living in America. And when he tries time, to pull bro. Logan over to field the question, it Logan starts going stop. on about how great it is. Chris tries to snap a picture of bro, Logan to show to Rod later, but shit, the flash I goes cry, off bro. and this triggers something in Logan, whose nose starts bro, bleeding as he like reminds him. Chris the name of the movie. Like the other bitch. You know, sorry. I get bumped just by a white person too. Like, what the fuck? Chat, am I really possessed? Eh, I think a white person will try to do more experimental shit with my body, though. And just eat. Oh, Missy and Dean try to explain it all the way as a yeah, seizure, and Logan apologizes for his actions Shut and leaves. Bitch Chris and Rose go for a walk, where he tells her it wasn't a seizure, and that he feels like Yo, he knew bro. Logan. Yo, bro. No, Logan, I knew the guy to come at me. They argue for a little bit until you he opens man, up more about cry, his mom bitch, and reveals bro. that a phone call would have saved her life you, since nigga? she had lain dying father. for hours after her accident. Elf Rose father. agrees to leave with him, and they embrace, reaffirming Maybe that's their why love once more. While this is happening, the old folks back in the Armitage estate are having a sort of silent auction with Chris's portrait on display. We're not entirely sure what's going on on here, but by the end of it, it looks like Jim Hudson has won out at an impressive price. It's a really interesting scene that manages to feel super sinister, even when you don't quite where know the, the kill count? away. Chris and Rose That's get back the to the house, video? where everyone stares them down with joyless smiles, and Jeremy plays the ukulele like he's auditioning for deliverance. Chris sends Rod the picture he took of Logan, and Rod tells it him it's a dude named Andre that they know and have met before. He was the guy in the cold open of the movie, actually, and he's been missing for six months now. Rod falls back on his theory. Sex slave! Oh, shit! 
shit. But Chris's phone dies hey. before they can talk further. Chris relays to Rose how urgently they need to leave, and then he notices a little cubby door open. What he peeks fuck? inside and finds bro, a box Breezy of pictures. Bro, got a Rose. little door like this in the back of his, in the back of his room, bro. Can't trust that nigga. with a bunch of different black guys, even though she told him he was the first black boyfriend she ever had. Even weirder is when he finds pictures of her with Andre and then with Walter and Georgina. What the fuck is going on here, Chris? Yeah, Chris crazy. goes to leave, but the family isn't interested in letting him go, and Rose just can't seem to find her keys. The weirdness breaks out into Bro, find the keys, Rose. Give me the damn keys, the open Rose. now. Dean like, talking about some heavy so cryptic solid. shit. Yeah, yeah, I can lie, chat. This movie's dead ass one of the greats. This is gonna Jeremy be my even top takes five a movie. swipe it at has to be. Has to be in my top five movies. Now that I think about it, and then Rose reveals that I don't she even got a favorite movie. Chris can't I know this is nah, in my nah, top nah, nah, five. Nah, nah. He finally goes to make a run for you it. Have but NFTs, they have no yeah, strikes, paralyzing a Chris and knocking him to the ground. Falling into the sunken place, he watches as Dean and Jeremy carry him away. Rose feebly tells him that he was one of her favorites. Now we're gonna hang with Rod for a bit while he tries to call Chris and figure out what the hell's going on. He researches Andre online, revealing that he's the one guy in the world who uses bits and figure out what the hell's going on. He researches Andre. Damn, bro, they was in Brooklyn, Online, too. Revealing that he's the one guy in the world who uses Bing, then takes his findings to the police. How can I help you, Rod Williams, from a TSA? He shows Andre's picture to Detective LaToya, and it reveals his ultimate theory about brainwashing and sex slavery. <laughs> Oh, Lord. Rob Williams. Oh, okay. TSA. Yeah, needless to say, she and the two cops she pulls in. Oh, yeah, my heart. What's, what, like, what's up with you, bro? You a little weird. Why do I get a notification from you, like, once a week of you following me? on Instagram. Like, if you don't want to follow me, nigga, just unfollow me, nigga. The only reason I'm following you is because I'm being nice. I wanted to follow my community back and shit. But you specifically, I was just being nice. I can unfollow you, nigga. You can just block me, nigga. Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Hear him out. Don't really believe him. Meanwhile, Chris nigga, wakes up in a sort of not cap, bit. nigga. It's literally my heart Farouk every fucking week. Like, Game room, bound to you go to my profile. Do you go to my profile, hit unfollow, and then follow again? Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Chair and facing an old school television. It starts playing a tape of Dean's dad, Roman Armitage, who looks like a spokesman for high fiber diets and who explains to the viewer that they've been chosen due to their genetic gifts. He says the coagula procedure will combine those physical traits with the determination and intelligence. Do I watch us first or get out? It's not in no chronological order but get out is the first movie that came out like none of that shit could it don't well technically it doesn't connect so Legit. I'm pretty sure it's the same universe though of white people to but yeah get out came first in 2017 teacup appears on screen and well and when did us come out 2019? he wakes up again to find jim hudson on the tv able to interact out. with him via some sort of intercom hudson tells him he's supposed to prepare him mentally for the procedure i mean you just watched this whole video and got spoiled pretty much a brain nigga. transfer although a i mean sliver nah it's still going hit it's still going to get out you'll be able to see and hear what your body is doing oh yeah you see how remember i babe remember i told you you didn't well it's not that you didn't believe me but I told you Kiki Palmer posted a I told you I've seen it. Oh, that. you seen it too? Yeah. And then now niggas is posting little trailers, sneak peeks, and snippets and shit. Your existence. The only reason I followed you, Zay, was because I don't like following people anymore and I'll be on Instagram either. But I still like you, man. Nigga, first of all, you're a bitch. That whole, that whole paragraph was some bitch-ass nigga shit. The only reason I unfollow... And first of all, Keem, what the fuck is even your Instagram? So I can block you, nigga. The only reason I unfollowed you, Zay, was because I don't like following people anymore, and I don't be on Instagram either, but I still like you, man. Like, what the fuck? will be as a passenger. That's right. I don't care about spoilers. It's not the same as watching. That's also true, but not always. Especially in a movie like this, where there's always twists and turns. You definitely should not get spoiled for a movie like this. Gonna be living in the sunken place. Fucking terrifying, right? Chris asks why it's with black people, and Jim mentions how several people want the perceived physical superiority of their race, but that Jim's not like that. You know, some of his best friends are black. He just wants Chris's eyes. He signs off, and Chris plays with some. Hey, at least he's not racist and, and all of that. With the chair stuffing that he's torn nah, out. That's Eventually, literally picking cotton. Teacup comes back well, on screen and knocks cotton him out. Right Dean gets going with the procedure, with Nurse Jeremy assisting him. He cuts open Jim Hudson's head, and while the heart monitor keeps beeping steadily along i'm gonna add jim to the kill count right now because spoiler alert he ain't ever coming back from this situation weird that Damn, our first kill bro. isn't until nearly an hour and a half into the movie but this film's about a lot more than just kills while dean's handling that brain meat jeremy goes to get chris's unconscious body with jeremy's back turned chris takes a bocce ball and nails jeremy God damn! <laughs> bro look at this nigga head bro bro now that i think about it, this look like a fake person right now bro i just paused at the perfect time hey does this nigga even look real 
me in the head with it, hitting him once more while he's on the ground for good measure. We see that he saved himself from hypnosis by literally picking that cotton out of the chair and stuffing it into his ears. That's some great reclamation, Chris. Dean comes out of the operating room to see where Jeremy is, and Chris surprises him by impaling him with the antlers. Damn! Nigga just killed him with deer antlers. Deer head for the second kill of the movie. Even more fun symbolic stuff here, since buck is a term historically used against black men in post reconstruction America. On his way out, Chris runs into Missy, who reaches for her teacup but doesn't make it before Chris smashes it to pieces. They have a short standoff before she takes a letter opener and tries to stab him with it, but he takes it through the hand like a champ. Oh my god, this nigga's gangster. This nigga thought he was Naruto chat. Have a short yeah, when Naruto did this shit. He takes a letter opener and tries he to stab him. He did this shit to Kabuto or some shit. Stab him with it, but he takes. Nah, I ain't gonna lie, this was tough. This is tough. Takes it through the hand like a champ and turns it back around on her, stabbing her in the head or maybe even the eye there the just off screen. Meme. Hey, Missy, stop stabbing yourself. Almost out the front door, Chris is attacked by Jeremy, who's come back into consciousness and is eager to finally get his jujitsu match on with Chris. He almost puts Chris to sleep with a headlock, but Chris stabs him in the leg with that Should letter opener and then him, kicks nigga. him down, ultimately killing him with a series of super violent, super God squishy damn, kicks nigga, to the fucking head. Get out of here, Jeremy, you out. nasty little racist weasel. Next time, try dry shampoo. Rose hasn't heard all this because she's been too busy listening to white people music and cruising the internet white people music nah who the fuck is that she looking for black athletes now nah this is crazy chat her scouting report is like off the charts so victim all while eating fruit loops in an old and why she don't got the colors mixed with the whites oh my god this, she's racist as fuck Bro, she's not mixing the colors in the whites. Bertly symbolic <laughs> way. Notice how she separates the white milk from the colored Bro. cereal. Outside, Chris takes Jeremy's car, which is shown to be the one from the cold open that drove away with Andre in the truck. But be before he can get away, Jay. he hits George. If Georgina. only you be my Kim K. Let's NFT a sex tape. Make a couple oh, million a day. Wasn't getting a the day. Right of Fuck you so for some cryptocurrency. That shit the new wave if it don't smell like booty, dick, and pussy. We ain't fuck right got her begging for her life when she monin. Is you all right? No. Feeling remorse from his mother's death and Georgina's earlier breakdown, he saves her and takes her in the car with him. But when she comes to, she attacks him and causes him to crash the car. This accident I would have never took that bitch. Dina, who is revealed to be housing the brain and soul or whatever of Dean's mother, Marion Armitage. Not anymore though, because now they're both dead. Rose has finally gotten savvy to the situation and hunts Chris down with a rifle. She sicks Walter on him, who is housing the brain and soul or whatever of Dean's dad, Roman. But Chris pulls his camera flash trick again, triggering an awakening in whoever's sunken inside Walter. He asks Rose for the gun to finish the job himself, but shoots her in the Damn. Belly instead. He then turns the gun on Damn. himself. Damn! Double homicide. Killing the Roman Walter combo for the sixth kill of the movie. Rose is still alive and she tries to grab the gun, but Chris beats her to it and slides it away from her. He starts to strangle her, but a cop car shows up and holds. Damn. Yo, I can't lie. I can't lie. This is why you can't watch the movie. You can't be spoiled, Scale. Bro, in the movie theaters. Yo, you don't understand how everyone's heart dropped in the movie theater chat. You don't understand how emotionally, like, torn everyone was in the movie theaters. Like, you see this shit? He's Gun, strangling this white bitch out right here. Away from. He's literally, everyone's dead and he's he strangling this white her, bitch out. But a cop and all you see is cop flashing. We all thought it was over. We all thought this nigga was going to jail. It, it, like. Shows up and holy shit, guys, this could be the darkest fucking ending I've ever seen. Bro, like, if we, they ended it like that, I, I, I would have cried, nigga. Like actual real. Just case. watched Night of the Living Dead. We saw that racist cop in the beginning, and we know the historical context surrounding this moment as Chris puts his hands up in a gesture that says, "Don't shoot." I was all ready to have my heart broken, but out of the cop car steps Rod Williams. Oh my TSA. god, did we over the <laughs> So before Chris asks him how the hell he figured everything nah, out. I feel like this movie is actually tough. Motherfucking A. We handle shit. Uh -huh. That's what we do. Consider this situation. W man's on guard. Fucking handle. With the situation fucking handled, they drive so off. I was he wrong. How many kills was it? Seven? Middle of the road seven? Seventh and final kill of the movie. Damn, bro. I had seven at first. Oh, God. I said seven at first. Go to the vault. Then I switched it to nine. Bro, I had seven. Turns out the original ending did actually have Chris arrested for strangling Rose to death, but Jordan Peele felt like there was just too much real shit going on and that his protagonist needed a win. Also, for everyone who kept commenting that this movie wouldn't have enough kills, it had just as many as the, the first screen. Don't believe me? Let's go with the numbers. Why the fuck is he eating a cereal like that? And he got the goddamn teacup, what the fuck? It gets a little tricky, what with the sunken place and all, but I'm gonna say seven people died and get out. My apologies to whoever was chilling inside Grandma and Grandpa Armitage. 
Of those seven victims, four were male and three were female, a nearly even split between genders. At a runtime of 104 minutes, that comes out to a kill, on average, almost every 15 minutes. Even though in actuality, there weren't any kills until the last 20 minutes of the film. I'll give the golden chainsaw for coolest death to Dean. I can't say I've ever seen anyone killed with a mounted deer head before, so that's points for originality. Add in the symbolism and the blood, and it's clearly the standout kill of the movie. Dolmachete for lamest death will go to Georgina, who caused herself to get killed in an accident. And that's it! Get Out was released earlier this year and set a few box office records for black filmmakers. It also held 100% on Rotten Tomatoes for a while, and I'm glad it got such a good reception because I'd be happy to see plenty more horror from Jordan Peele. Now what we on Up next, we're starting game. another big series with Child's Play, but until then, I'm James A. Janice. This has I been The Kill Count. Video, hey guys, thanks a lot for watching The Kill well, Count for Get I Out. I want to thank some we of my patrons. Like a full like breakdown of the movies, but I guess technically he had to either way. Even if he doesn't do it like they had to either way. Because you're not going to skip all the way to the end. Nigga, the end had all the kills. Seven seven blessings on one hand, but I'm grateful. When I make it home, look to the sky and I say thank you. I peeked the snakes up in the grass, I couldn't play cool. If they put the up and leave, nigga, they was mental.